Good morning and welcome to this demonstration of uh, our uh, Oracle backup on uh, Rubrik. Thank you for your time. Uh, so uh, I guess you're all familiar with the Oracle, uh, with the Rubrik uh, GUI, but uh, if you're not, I'm going to just give you a quick overview. So uh, here we can see the main GUI. We have our databases, VMs, protection over here, status. Uh, we have our SLA domains, we have our activity, we can see whether there are any live mounts going, uh, system is green so everything looks fine, uh, etc. Now remember that uh, Rubrik does not use the traditional approach of jobs and back of windows, we have uh, our policies in what are called SLA domains. An SLA domain is simply a codification of the business's need for backup. What are the requirements that your chief uh, InfoSec guys want? What, uh, how do we codify this? Basically, we tell how many backups we want, how many hours, say once every four hours, keep it for three days. Um, one every day, keep it for 31 days. Every month, keep it for 12 months. Every year, keep it for 10 years, just as an example. Uh, we can choose whether or not to have a snapshot window. We don't have to. Uh, the uh, rubric will use machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence to determine when it's best to take back of your environment. Uh, this also means that you'll avoid the typical, everyone is coming to work on Monday uh, thing where the backup system is still struggling, struggling to take back off of your exchange database and everyone's coming to work and starting to log in and every con everything goes down in flames. Uh, in this case, the rubric will back off from that and uh, let people work as usual. We do recommend, however, that your first backup is uh, done uh, at an opportune time, for instance, on a Friday afternoon, because that will take a bit of a time to do the first ingestion. Uh, we can also click here for remote settings, whether we want to replicate to cloud or replicate to another rubric for archival purposes and replication. Very simple. So notice that there are no specific jobs for databases, NAS files, Linux servers, Windows servers. Basically, rubric will determine which mechanisms are opportune to use for either of those. So you just define the, your business needs and we will take care of the rest on behind the curtain, so to say. So when it comes to Oracle, we have, I've cheated a bit. What I've done is I've gone to download the Oracle, uh, sorry, the uh, Linux agent uh, for any standalone host or any database host, we need a small connector in order to do those backups. It's just a small RPM or Debian file. You install it very simply, a few megabytes, up and running. Same goes for AX or Solaris. Very easy to install. Once you've installed it, you just add it here by, by using the IP and host name, and that's it. The host will then show up here. And in case of a database, it will auto discover databases. We can see here that the Aura 12C prod has a no one node and one database running. In order to protect this host, it's very simple. All you have to do is to do manage protection and assign a protection scheme. Here in the case of Oracle, we say that we want to log back up every 15 minutes and we want to keep that for seven days. Press submit, that's it, it's now protected. I could also go over here and protect any specific Oracle instance. But the reason I do it on the host level is that if we add more database instances to this host, they will automatically be discovered and automatically be protected. So that's uh, an easy way to do it. Now for restores, it's also very simple. I go here to Oracle to the host, I can now see all the databases that are on this particular host, click on it, and here is the GUI for the recovery. I can see here which cluster we're running on, which host, 
I can see the attached SLA domain for this particular database. I can see the oldest recovery point and the latest recovery point over here. I can also see whether or not there are live months going on this particular database. For the moment, there are none. I'm going to explain more about that later. And we can see when the next scheduled snapshot is. Over here, we have our calendar, which, which has green dots. A green dot basically means that for a given day, we have at least one valid backup. So I can click in here on the backup and see this slider. Now, the slider where it's green, you can see that there's the a red portion, which means we do not have backup for that particular time window. And there's a green portion, and the green portion means that we do have active backups for that particular time. Uh, these small green dots are the snapshots of the entire database. So that's a full database backup. Whereas in between here, I can use a slider to drag, and this means we have the log backups for that particular time. Notice that there, as I drag this slider, the time here also changes. So it means that I can also go in here and add, put in the time and say I want it at a quarter minus, uh, two minus, a quarter minus, quarter to two, uh, and I, I want it at that particular time. Uh, when it comes to restore, I can then go ahead and do uh, a mount, which I'm going to do. So we're going to mount it. Uh, a mount means that we're not touching the production database, we're just mounting a new one. This means that we will not be allowed to do it on the production host, we have to do it on the separate developer host in this case. Mounts are very useful for doing stuff like testing, for um, DevOps, testing databases, testing uh, upgrades on production, uh, well, on the production data, but on a different system. Uh, that's why we use the mount. So let's go ahead and mount this. Uh, imagine if you'd have to do this yourself, then you would have to get the data files, to recover the data files, get the log files, get the control files, get everything assembled on the uh, uh, database host, and then start to combine them together and using Armin to launch the database and to get the correct time. Uh, we automate all of that. You don't have to do any of that. It's just being performed in the background for you. Also notice down here uh, that we do have different table spaces. So instead of recovering the entire database, I can go ahead and recover one of the table spaces. Now to show you that I haven't cheated, we're going to go here and show you that we have just started, a few seconds ago, we started the PMON up here. Uh, so the PMON uh, process just started right now. Uh, and this is, so the Oracle is, uh, database is now launching. It was blank before, as you can see, there was not, nothing. Now we just started it. So this is on the dev server. Uh, we have, so, have some other options. We can export the data. Export the data means precisely what it looks like. You export it and you go ahead and export it to a cluster, in this case, this one. Uh, and uh, the data will then be residing on that cluster, on the data store of that particular cluster. With the mount option, the data is actually residing on the rubric. So we export the files and the log files to the, um, to the, to the database cluster, but the actual data files are residing on the rubric. This is what permits us to do a very, very speedy uh, recovery. We can recover a multi-terabyte uh, Oracle database in a matter of minutes, as we'll show you. Well, we can see down below here that there are now activities going on. It's running the Armand scripts to mount the database. So not, it's not that we only recover the data for you. We actually run the Armand scripts and get the database online so it's ready to use. Keep in mind that all of this can be automated via APIs. So you can actually do this automatically and uh, get the data out um, uh, via API. So this is brilliant for, for instance, um, DevOps situations. You don't need to have the DBAs go in and touch your actual rubric system. They can do it uh, via an API, via provisioning system. 
I also have instantly recover. That's the last option. Instantly recover means that we are going to assume that the database is down. We're going to assume that it's dead and we're going to instantly recover it. It means that we're going to present vol a volume to the Oracle server from the rubric and overwrite uh, or take the place of the old production database and launch it on the production environment. So that allows us to instantly recover in case of disaster. As we mentioned before, on table spaces, we can do an export for a given particular table space. So if you have a need for that particular one, uh, just go ahead and do that. Now, the, as we can see here, the Armen livebound script has completed successfully. So uh, this means that the database should be ready to run. And uh, let's see. So we go into the uh, host. This is the dev server, as we can see. Uh, we see that it's up and running. Uh, we log on. We're going to log on to the uh, instance. So here we go. Anyone familiar with Oracle will understand what we're doing. Here we go. And uh, now to run the SQL code. Here, so uh, as you can see, uh, we've now mount, mounted the database and this will show you, this is a uh, var rubric Oracle. So we mounted it basically on our system. So we mounted it on the rubric. Uh, everything seems to be up and running. Everything's looking okay. Uh, you can now go ahead and do whatever tests you need, uh, simulate, uh, do the upgrades you want to do, test, etc., etc. So recovery is up and running. As you saw, it didn't take many minutes. Now, once this is done, uh, once it's done, once you've tested whatever you want to test, obviously it's important that we also clean up after ourselves. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do then is we can go in, we can see the live modes over here, see that we have one live mount running up here and we're going to do an unmount and do a force and mount. Once we've done that, we will see that the system is actually shutting down the uh, that particular uh, instance and it's actually going to remove the data also from the and remove everything from the uh, dev environment to see here that it says one database with five tab table spaces on the test one uh, it's going to remove it and shutting down as you can see it's shutting down it's cleaning up after itself so you don't need to do anything basically after you've done a remove uh, and an amount uh, this is very important uh, again, with the automation, it means that you can actually also clean up automatically once you're done. It doesn't leave any stale data, doesn't leave any relics behind itself, any tombstones, nothing like that. So that was a quick demo of the uh, Oracle capabilities of uh, Rubrik. Uh, if you'd like to know more, do not hesitate to reach out to us. We're uh, more than happy to come and show you. We can uh, uh, go more into depth on how to, we can achieve this and uh, what to do in particular cases, if you have any particular use cases for us. 
Uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, have a good weekend. Thank you very much.